So we've been doing a lot of list videos for the end of the decade, but today we're going to start in on yet another thing that's ending um, that requires some review, which is just the end of the year. The good old end of the year. Just a simple 365 days worth of albums. Uh, it doesn't sound as exciting after already seeing the end of the decade list. Like, to some extent we can spoil the order, thinking about what 2019 albums appeared on the end of the decade list. I would assume, for the most part, they're in agreements. Agreeance, sorry? But there are albums that came out since Pitchfork's painfully early end of decade list uh, that thus will only show up on this list. So, you know, that's exciting. Um, of course, this list is still, uh, what, what, 29, no, 19 days from the end of the year. So a lot of stuff could come out in those 19 days, too. I don't know what you're doing here, Pitchfork. Let's let's see let's see what they're doing. This uh, cover image is pretty crazy. Very very throwback uh, to like some terrifying time in the '90s where everything was really squiggly and embrossed, and people just had access to those tools in Photoshop for the first time, and they they couldn't help themselves. Hyperspeed world. Hmm. For shelter for the noise. For better noise. Yeah. Don't look down on noise. Drowsy hip hop to pitch perfect pop. It's kind of like this. Look at this. We have non alliterative word, alliterative hyphenated, alliterative hyphenated, uh, alliterative. Whatever. Okay. What do we got on here? Floating points, I have never listened to, but consistently seem to get pretty good reviews. I think it's just kind of chill, synthesized synthesizer music. I remember listening to one single that had floating points on it. Excuse me, I just got really gassy all of a sudden. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The KDB remix. She had this song called Calm Down that got remixed by Fortet and Floating Points. Or, wait, 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 no, no, it wasn't a remix. They just did the actual original production. This is a banger. This is a fantastic song. So, that's the one thing I know about Floating Points, and it's very positive, so I should probably check this out. Should I make a list? For nah, I'm not gonna bother. No idea what this is. Singer, songwriter, stuff. Yeah, alright. Lemons her dog is her best friend. Even though she sings, he doesn't even know what my name is. Oh, oh, wow. Oh. All right. This album art is crazy. All the chocolate coins. You know what I'm saying? I've been listening to this quite a bit. It's just really smooth. Like, it's just really addictive. Every beat transition brings you right back in. I haven't studied it lyrically as much as I have a lot of other Danny Brown albums. Um, it seems a little more subtle in those regards, a little more kind of like psychedelically askew. Um, whereas the other ones, it was very clear, like where he was expressing his pain, storytelling, very vivid imagery. Um, there's a lot of, yeah, it's mellower, more sober headspace. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Nah, really good stuff. Surprised it's not higher TDH. Don't know what this is. Some DJ guy. This album art is quite terrifying. Trance like bangers made propulsive entirely via cycling synth melodies. Even more ambient sounds swell and build like club music. Hmm. I, mean, I could be into that. That sounds alright. Chai Punk. This is something that I feel like I ought to know about. Because it's from Japan, but I don't. So that's a little, uh, hmm, troubling. <laughs> I gotta work harder. Uh, yeah, this one looks great. Album cover looks great. The insanity that they're describing sounds amazing. Yeah, all right. Oh, wow, I'm happy to see this here. I'm really happy to see this here. Uh, so the baby, uh, uh, one of my favorite rappers right now. He's just so exciting. He, he raps his heart out on every single track. He does like interesting flows on every verse. Uh, I'm I'm really impressed. He's super ambitious too. 
So, what the heck? This has happened a few times. What? Look, I'm clearly clicking here. Oh, that time it did work. Um, so yeah, he had both Baby on Baby and Kirk come out this year. Kirk was like a little more serious, a little more like album-y. Um, it had higher profile features and stuff too. I think I kind of like it better. I don't know. They both definitely have their appeal. I've been going back to both of them with some regularity. I wonder uh, I wonder if Kirk will show up later on this list too. I, I don't know. I think it's a little better. I feel like when Pitchfork reviewed it, they actually gave Kirk a better score. But maybe I'm wrong. Kirk got a 7.6. 7.7. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, Holly Herndon. I've heard of a lot of really good things about her. I've listened to some of her stuff. Um, ooh. Her place the fragmented rhythms of Jalen. I like Jalen a lot. Yeah, I should check this out. Rico Nasty and Kenny Beats. Damn, they're really out here. I have a friend who follows these guys quite quite closely, um, so I've known about them in some capacity for quite a long time. So it's cool to see the strides they're making. Uh, yeah, this is probably really really fun to listen to. I should. <gasps> yeah. Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Dude, I love this album. I love this album. Oh, oh, I'm, I listen to it. Like, I I don't know. I listened to it first just kind of on a novelty. Like, what the heck is this? And then I return to it so frequently with a, a lessening and lessening sense of absurdity and more of a, a deep personal connection to this actual music. Um, we'll probably talk about it a lot on my own list of 2019 albums, and maybe my end list of end-of-decade albums, too. I can't uh, say right now if it's on there or not. For spoilers, also because I haven't really decided. Um, yeah, this album is fantastic. The, the thing that's hit me most recently is that the lyrics actually make me emotional. Maybe it's just because I'm in a very emotional place right now, which is true, but I was listening to... He said, you love me on the plane. I said, I love you too. He said, everything is different now. Everything's changed. Ah, I, just, I don't know. Something about this, this conversation. It just like really resonated with me. And maybe there's like layers of irony that I'm not even parsing. Maybe there's like some subversive subtext here that this relationship is actually in a really bad place. Um, but to me, I, it just hit me so sincerely, so... I don't know. And then the transition between, I said, nothing's new, nothing's changed. I still need you. I'm about to hit the boop. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And later when she shouts, I might throw my phone into the lake. Yeah. Where is that? What? Isn't that the song? I don't know who it is. Yeah, I might go and throw my phone into the lake. Yeah, I don't know. This line. Big mood. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I think this album is, like, really, really beautiful. Uh, lingering mood is one of intimacy. Yeah. Oh, it's so nice. It's, it's like, nice. It's, like, actually nice. Oh, this showed up somewhere else, didn't it? On one of the end of the decade lists, I think. This, this band, maybe, just at least. Um, what other what other songs do they have? Oh, I don't know. Maybe not. Who can tell? <laughs> who, can, who can tell the difference between any two metal albums? <laughs> alright. Hey, alright. I, I like this a lot, too. Happy to see this on here. Uh, really interesting stuff. Very beautiful music. Very sad at times. But also really dancey, really fun, really kind of gets you into the group. Um, all right, good, good. Dallas Hardling Designer. Or is it Designer with another eye <laughs> performing at Dallas Harding? Uh, show the ferret to the egg and dares us to not overthink them. Hmm. 
Ooh, I like that. Yeah, this sounds actually really interesting. Okay, this is going on the list. Not that we're actually making a list this time, but... <laughs> Wrap. Export. Yo, what? What? Okay. Oh, okay, all right, again, pretty cool. Not gonna try to pronounce this. Miss Universe. Ooh. As someone who picks out my nails all the time, it's interesting. Makes me pretty curious. Song that seems to imagine what Timbaland might have sounded like if he made 80s new wave records. Ooh, okay. Okay, all right. This sounds great. So you start reading these things and they're just so positive and so exciting and so interesting. You're like, why wasn't this on, excuse me, the best of the decade list? <laughs> why don't I remember any of these getting good reviews? I'm just curious. I'm not trying to call it Pitchfork or Supercritical. Oh, they did give it best new album. Well, then it's my fault. <laughs> I guess I just wasn't paying enough attention to Pitchfork. Denzel Curry. Sure, I've never been super into him, but he seems like a very solid rapper, very sincere rapper, just working his best to spread his message. Mannequin Pussy. All right. Hmm, I like this title, Drunk 2. Ooh, now isn't that just so evocative? Drunk 2. <laughs> uh, sure. Yeah, I don't know. Seems nice. I like this Globe on Fire album cover, too. There's a lot to like about it. Ooh, I listened to this quite a bit. Uh, just a really ambitious, experimental um, British rap album. Kind of grimy, but I wouldn't really call this grime. Yeah. He's so precise. He's so... Oh, they do call him a grime MC. Yeah. Yeah, this thing's, thing's pretty interesting. I, I'm, I'm into it. Probably listen to it some more, because I kind of forgot. Oh, excuse me. Oh, not that I'm bored by Polo G or anything. Just had a yawn. Sure, wow, some of the best hip-hop ballads in recent memory. I know, like, nothing about this person. I've not heard of them a day in my life, but... The melodic side of drill. I'm into that. I do really like that. There's a lot of drill rappers I've listened to where it's like, they get to this kind of like fever pitch in the climaxes of their verses. And then sometimes they'll even, yeah, they do this kind of melodic break. And it almost reminds me of like Bone Thugs and Harmony, where the tempo and the energy are kept up. But then you just start kind of shifting your voice um, to create like a very subtle, long phrased melody. It's really beautiful. It, it has this real transcendental appeal. Um, especially since, you know, the, there's so much of the performance that's kept into the recording. So much of that that energy and that desperation when you're really pushing uh, through the climax of the songs. So, oh, that's pretty awesome. This, I think, was on the best of the decades list. No? Yes, I think. So, will all future things also be on said list? Or are they saying, eh, this one's not as good as we thought a few months ago? <laughs> I don't know. Sure. Ooh, Mike. Cool. Okay, so I don't know too much about Mike yet. But Earl Sweatshirt's, like, latest career development, his latest, like, major artistic shift towards the sort of music that he was making on some rap songs and Feet of Clay, um, he attributed to Mike and Standing on the Corner and some other artists that he had been hanging out a lot with. Um, Mike especially, it feels like Earl has just this strong affinity to and, and respect for it. So yeah, I, I have a lot that I'm, I'm very curious about with Mike. I don't know why I haven't listened to his music yet, actually. Just maybe a bit of intimidation. Um, but this, this sounds fantastic. This sounds really fantastic. My gosh. Well, this is spoilers, but my gosh. That sounds extremely moving. Oso oh, oh, Oso, oh, basking in the glow. Hmm. 
kind of reminds me of Shu Shu. Like, you know, XIU, XIU. Uh, which is an artist I really, really expect. Or, pff, really, really respect. Curious. Very curious. Sure. Thank you. Next. Yeah, some definite bangers on here. Seems fine. <laughs> uh, Nick Cave. Nick Cave didn't appear at all on the uh, 2010s list, I don't think. Let's find out. Oh, the 100 best songs are out as well. I don't know if I'm going to bother making a video about that. Um, I, I remember thinking it was surprising that Nick Cave wasn't on here. Yeah. They always give him really good reviews. So at least at least here. Yeah, yeah. Florist. Emily alone. Hey. Uh hmm. That sounds really nice. Really, maybe kind of brutal, maybe kind of sad. Beautiful droning synthesizer music. That sounds really nice, too. So she releases under her own name. Hmm, I like the name Florist, too. A lot to like here. Okay, we'll definitely check. Oh my gosh, please stop burping. We'll definitely check this one out. Burn a boy. Oh, we. Was that on here? Some whoops. S somewhere we had heard about Burnham Boy, right? Oh gosh, it, it all blends together now. Sounds familiar, at least. I guess that's all I'm saying. It sounds familiar. Oh, that's right. Vampire Weekend had a good album that came out. Huh. Huh. All right. I hadn't really heard anything about this. I remember they gave it like a decent review at least. That was really their first album in six years. Really? Really? Hmm. Kim Gordon. That's the woman from Sonic Youth. It's pretty cool. Worked with someone who worked with Youth Tumor. I love Youth Tumor. Hmm. Ooh, that this is an awesome structure. This sort of, uh, I don't know, intrudence, intruding on a theme, intruding on the re repetition of a theme. I really like things like that. Huh, yeah, all right. I'm into this. Sounds good. There's Igor. He was a little lower than I thought it would be. I, I remember Pitchfork really liked, I really liked Igor when it came out. Earthquake, fantastic. Play by Cardi feature, probably my favorite part of this whole album, but really, really nice. Yeah. Oh yeah. This is this is really cool. Good album. Kate LeBond reward. Look at this album cover. Whoa. I'm into that. Penny, you're studying furniture building in an English architecture school. Living alone in a cabin in England. Blah, blah. Wow. Layers of guitars, synths, saxes, and more make it feel lavish but never overstuffed. Sounds great. I'm in. This one, sure. All right. Gen Z music concrete. We can do better than that. Come on, really? Is this Gen Z music concrete? I suppose I shouldn't criticize because, like, maybe I haven't heard these ones. I feel like I've heard like probably two thirds of this album. But I never actually just sat down and listened to it. I suppose I should see what the, the youth are into. Um, here's my question. To me, I like 07 06. I kind of wish every time people talked about Billie Eilish, they just talked about 07 06. <laughs> Maybe that's unreasonable. Maybe maybe I, there's something I'm not getting, but 
I'm so, so impressed with all the music I've heard from her so far. Impressed in ways that I, I think are just, uh, she just th is doing things that nobody else is at all. Anyways, oh, Jenny Haval, I think that's maybe how you pronounce that. Sure, a very critically acclaimed musician. Never really listened to that much. Jessica Pratt, folk singer, sure. Sure, sure. Are you hearing these songs or spying on them? Ooh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, solitary. Using suicidal shots. Just... Wow. Looks how weird and cool it is to be a young person with a nice and meaningful life ahead. Hmm. Uh, it's like a blizzard outside. Oh, yeah, this seems really good. Really intense. Oh, Sandy, Alex, G. We've uh, seen them show up quite often on uh, the end of the decade list, so showing up on the 2019 list isn't too surprising. I listened to a bit of their music after uh, seeing it praised so often. I, I'm like, I don't know, I'm not like super into it yet. I'm, I'm kind of waiting for the song to really hook me. So far I'm just like, oh, this is impressive, but I'm not super compelled or anything yet. Yeah. Bonnie Bears, I, I. So I listened to this, I was really excited for it because I'm a huge fan of uh, 22 A Million. But uh, I don't know, it wasn't, it didn't really catch me. It There was nothing that like structured. Um, like, what really impressed me about 22 A Million was, like, the contrast of form and structure that for some points he would kind of segue back into having traditionally write music, but then have, like, an entirely different sonic atmosphere. Then sometimes he would go to the old sonic atmosphere, but, like, string it out and make it super spacey and, and kind of experimentally structured. And on this one, it was just kind of, like, not really doing anything, like, just kind of tracks and they sounded interesting like sonically they sounded really cool and they had all sorts of weird things kind of popping in and out but i never kind of felt surprised i never felt like uh suddenly hooked and gripped in a way that the transitions and the the, the sudden choices unexpected choices of uh, 22 a million really made me feel so, yeah, a little disappointed. They sure liked it, so good for them. New Bill Callahan. I haven't listened to enough Bill Callahan. I feel like I could really like him. But uh, we just haven't gotten there yet. Maybe it's my love for Joanna Newsom that's preventing me, given that she's alluded to him being kind of a shitty boyfriend in songs when they were together. So, is that good enough? I don't know. Beyonce's Homecoming. I haven't listened to this too much yet. It's very long, and it's often that I want to listen to, like, a specific song, specific studio recording, you know? Like, I want to listen to uh, Drunk in Love, just Drunk in Love. I don't necessarily want to listen to an entire hour set in which that song is expertly woven in. You know, I don't know, but it is really good. Like I was super, super impressed when I heard it. So, okay. Uh, this is one of two Big Thief albums that came out. I saw Big Thief all over these lists, including Pitchfork's own list. So I was like, all right, I gotta check these guys out. I listened to UFOF and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. I've been listening to it so much. It very quickly climbed up my own lists. Um, so I listened to this one as well, and it's like, well, it's good. It's it's like, I don't know, kind of more progressive in some ways. It has more dynamics and more kind of tension, um, climaxes, things like that. A little more traditional in that sense. UFOF is very spacey, very kind of loopy and melodic and... Um, most of its kind of dynamicism just comes from weirdness, comes from very shocking elements 
um, shouting, screaming. So I like this one okay. I think it's really good, but it really just made me appreciate UFOF all the more. That it kind of felt like this one, they were like, all right, let's write some music. Whereas UFOF, it just felt like things were pouring out of them. So yeah, good though. I'm sure UFOF will be even higher up here. Brittany Howard, Jamie. I feel like, uh, is this on this list? Yeah, she was, that's where I know her. She was in Alabama Shakes, which is a group that I had never taken interest in. And then I was like, oh, maybe I should take an interest in. And then now this person has a solo album, which apparently is good too. Amelia Woods, this I think was on the Decade End list, or someone's Decade End list. Yeah. Sure. Still seems interesting. Still haven't listened to it. <laughs> did they reuse? They did not. Good. They did not. They did not. I was looking at some paste lists. Remember for a while we were looking at all the paste magazines lists? Uh, there was a few that I was just like, well, I'll read through this. I'm not going to make a video on it. They had one on the best comedy specials and then the best comedians of the decade. And where there was a comedian who also had a comedy special, they reused the same write-up. No, I, I disapprove. I disapprove of that. Like, why? Like, just write something else. You think there's not enough to say? You think you can't come up with another paragraph on this person? I, I was shocked. It just seemed like such an unnecessary about a bit of uh, laziness. Okay, so what's left? Um, UFOF, FKA Twigs Magdalene might be number one for all I know. Uh, they gave it a very, very glowing review. Probably Lana Del Rey's Norman fucking Rockwell will be number two. UFOF number three. Uh... Blood Orange's Angel's Pulse will be somewhere in the top 10, I sure hope. I'd like to see Caligula by uh, Lingua Ignata, I think that's how you pronounce her name. Um, I, I thought it would show up somewhere on this list, and it hasn't yet. So I'm hoping that's because Pitchfork has has finally it's like clicked for them how, how awesome that al album is. Um, but maybe not. What else? I'm gonna cheat a little bit. I'd like to see Freddie Gibbs' bandana, but I kind of doubt it at this point. Uh, we already saw 100 Gex, hell yeah. Jesus is King? No, I doubt it. Yeah, so how many did I name? Not that many. Definitely not 10. But we'll, we'll see. There's, there's already like this, I don't know. Sure. Um, wow. Wow, okay. Was this on the, the decade list as well? I kind of don't think so. I think it came out more... Oh, no, no, it's here, it's here, it's here. Yeah, okay. Reading this one, I didn't, didn't strike me uh, as, as depressing as it made it seem here. Hmm. I don't know. Might, maybe I'd like this. Maybe I shouldn't find out right now. As I said, I'm very emotional lately. This might, uh, if I'm, if I'm, if a hundred gex is making me cry, <laughs> can I really handle this? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, Waze Blood. Wise Blood? Waze Blood? Sure. Should have expected that. That showed up quite high on this list as well. Fenez Agora. Uh, huh. Was this on the, the decade list? Oh, okay. All right. Look at that consistency. 143, 142, 9, 8. Pitchfork. Look at that consistency. Um, I remember, I think they talked about, yeah. And then I was like, that's cool. Now, I read it again, and I was like, that's cool. I already knew that was cool. <laughs> uh, all right. 
Sure. The guns don't want to listen to this. Hey, I, I, uh, I really do want to listen to this. I felt bad that I hadn't listened to it because recently, um, a friend of mine, Toro Sagame, uh, Instagram. My, my good friend, Gengoro Tagame. <laughs> no, just kidding. Although I have met Gengoro Tagame. Uh, what? Fans? Wait, what's his actual Instagram? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm following him on Instagram. Am I logged in? Following. There we go. Why didn't this show up before? So, on Tagame's Instagram, he just posts albums that he's listening to. So, a friend of mine spent all of their uh, free leech tokens and uh, was just downloading everything on here. So, I was looking through stuff that he had downloaded and I was like, hey, I just learned about this a bit ago. I just thought I'd listen to it. I don't like people getting ahead of me like that. <laughs> Tagame was already ahead of me. And now my friend who loves Tagame is going to get ahead of me too. But yeah, he's got really fantastic taste. All the stuff on here I think is awesome that, I, that I've heard of on here is awesome. Which makes me think that all of the stuff on here that I haven't heard of is even more awesome. But like, look at this. Absolute banger. Immortal banger. Godly. How is your taste in music so much better than mine? Hey, that's that's my friend. <laughs> Alright. Anyways. Uh look at look at all these. Banger after banger. Okay. Um so yeah, I really gotta listen to this. This sounds so cool. Bad bunny? Oh I didn't know this came out this year. For some reason I was thinking this is like a couple years old. A rare Spanish verse from Drake? This is culture vulturing on a level I had never anticipated. A, a, I, I don't know about rare, there's other words. Inexplicable? <laughs> so blatantly pandering it's painful. Uh, good old culture vulturing to the max. Not just culture vulturing, but... Sorry, I just noticed that there's a chip out of this fork. I don't know why there's a fork sitting on my desk, but there is. Uh, I mean... <coughs> I, I do want to listen to this. This is an area of music that I'd like to learn more about. I like Diplo okay. I like Diplo... probably more than I should. <laughs> Um, but less than it seems that most of the population does. Uh, but this just blows my mind. Why did Drake rap in Spanish? Why? Why? What? For what reason is Drake rapping in Spanish? Solange is when I get home? Oh, okay, okay. Sure. Should have seen that coming. Looks like Caligua, Caligula, Calig... Caligula. That's how you pronounce it, right? That's how it's spelled. Caligula is rip, unfortunately. As is maybe Angel's Pulse, which is such a shame. That album is so friggin' good. Because we still gotta get um, UFOF, Lana Del Rey, and uh, FKA Twigs in here. So who are, the, the fourth one could still be Blood Orange, I guess. That would be nice. But if those three aren't in there, I'm going to be really shocked. So there's only room for one more. Is there something more likely than Blood Orange? I don't know. Let's let's see Blood Orange. Show me Blood Orange. Ah, Angel Olsen. Okay, All right, sure. All right. Sure, 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 sure. There's UFOF. I think it's going to be the exact order I predicted. Next is uh, Lana Del Rey. No! Next is FKA Twigs. They gave Lana Del Rey... The AOT! She AOT'd! Album of the Year! Congratulations! To Lana Del Rey. Now, 
Is this actually the highest ranking? This was at 19, yeah. Okay. I think UFOF is really high up too, but it's not that high. 33, okay. Okay, I love UFOF though. This album I, I quite like too. I think I gotta listen to it more. It's like, every time I listen to it, there's something quite subtle that stands out to me that I didn't really notice before. And I think that'll just keep happening. And it'll be something quite incredible. But, yeah. And then this... I don't know, I've already talked about it a lot. <laughs> I, I still like it. It still sounds really pretty and beautiful. But the, the depth I anticipated and kind of sinking into... Um, it is Complet 101. I want to Complet like 407. <laughs> it, it's, I don't know. The lyrics are dense poems destined for academic scrutiny. Um, I, I guess I'm just really hung up on it. This, 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 the, 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 what, what does this mean? Oh, is that what it's referring to? <laughs> Wait a minute, maybe I'm the one that's an idiot. Oh no, is it supposed to be a line about that? Like that people are talking about colonizing Mars? What? Oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Let's look at another random song and see if it has good lyrics. Hmm. One day I woke up like maybe I'll do it. Different. That's that's our yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. All right, whatever. That's all new year. Sure. Uh, a list that's quite consistent with uh, the end of decade list. I was curious about top songs. I wonder if Old Town Road will be on here. Let's just skim through it quick. I don't know. We're not going to spend too much time on it. Like, I, what can I even say about this? I don't... I don't care about Sean Mendes. <laughs> uh, I don't know what this is either. Hey, footwork! Alright, then maybe I do. This we saw on the albums... Sure, thinking about you. You know, no, no. I've been thinking about you. It's a different song. Sure, sure. Ooh, a super back. Um, sure. Don't care. A lot, a lot of things. I don't know where like any of this is. Black Belt Eagle Scout. Sounds awesome. Nice. Good one. Not my favorite off of this album, but, you know. It's a good one. Black Midi. Kind of want to get into these guys. But it's like, hey, there was already a thing called Black Midi. Were you aware? There's, not these, but this. A genre. Where people just spam midis with as many notes as possible. And it's, uh, it makes these, like, insanely noisy, complicated, hellish remixes of vaguely familiar melodies. I think it's pretty cool. Were you aware of that? Rock band Black Midi? Black Midi? Sure. I, this is good. There's other songs on here I like better, but sure. Glad that it's out here at all. Sure, 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 sure. Sure, 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 sure. Hey, I like this song. Pretty good. Sure, sure, sure. I forgot there was a new caribou. I think this isn't out yet. I think this is like the first single of something coming out next year. 
Sure, 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 sure. Do, 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 do. Yeah! I, okay, so this is like one of their more popular songs. I think it was like a single and they made a music video. And I do really like it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> when the, you talk a lot of big shit for somebody with such a small truck. <laughs> it's like, what? Why are you talking about trucks? Who cares about trucks? But then maybe the whole song is about trucks. Yeah, I don't know. It's pretty good, but yeah, I think there's other things on this album that are much better. Ah, uh, I, I should watch or listen to this, Lost Wisdom 2. It hasn't gotten like amazing reviews, but I really like Mount Eerie stuff lately, so I think I'll like it. This is from Chai. We'll definitely listen to this. Cool, sure, sure. Sure, oh, Toro Imoi. Sure, sure. Do you think we'll have any Blood Orange on this list? I feel like or Blood Orange got snubbed. Because I thought they gave our boy Dev Hines a good review for Angel's Pulse. Eight. Okay. Oh, I don't know. Oh, it's so good, though. It's so good. I don't know. I, I associate Toro Imoi and... Blood Orange, because the same friend that got me into both of them. That's why I brought it up. This I like. I listen to the single quite a bit. It's very catchy, very fun. This I like alright. Everyone loves it. Um, I was just listening to it at a party on Monday. Fun. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah! I should, uh... Listen to this album. I haven't yet. Ooh. Maybe maybe I should listen to this. I feel, I don't think I've heard this one. I, I didn't listen to the whole album yet. But I've listened to... I thought all of the singles. I guess this isn't a single. Whatever. Yes! Yo! Pussy Pepper! Let's go! Yeah, it's like... There's not even an official release. It just leaks. It's so good. Um. Yeah. It was pretty hard to listen to the song for a while, because it kept getting taken down, and then you'd find only clips, or they'd have it in the wrong order. Most of the uploads of the song have the Playboy Cardi first. Playboy Cardi verse first? No. 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 You have to build up to that anticipation. You need both Young Nudie verses, and then the, the completely unique, irreplaceable, transcendently beautiful magic of Cardi going the F off. Yeah, this is fantastic. Fantastic. Sure, sure. Zombie. <laughs> sure. Sure. What? Sure. Ooh, nice. Sure, sure. Sure. Probably listen to this. I like Gear, Gear Hunter. Sure. Sure, sure. Hey, there we go. This is an amazing song. I mean, this whole album is just full of amazing songs. I don't even think this is in my like top three favorite on this album, but yeah, it's it's really good. Sure. Mm, sure, 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 sure. Sure, 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 sure. Yeah, banger. Oh. Sure. Oh, interesting. I was curious what songs they would pick from this. This is actually a pretty beautiful one. It's it's a really nice ending, I think. Um Sure. I I really prefer the the second song is fantastic. The whatever apartments and the Venice Bitch. Mwah. Fantastic song. But sure. Sure. Yeah, really? I like this song, but I think he has way more interesting songs. I think this is like one of the few cases where he like tried to really kind of run based on catchiness of hook rather than like impressiveness of hook. He usually goes a lot harder than this, but it is good. It is very good. I just think there's better ones. Oh, Jai Paul. So Jai Paul put out the bait ones. He, like, officially released all the songs that leaked. 
And I was kind of surprised this didn't show up on the end of the year list. They gave it an amazing review, but they didn't give it best new music, because I guess they didn't consider it new. So that's why it doesn't show up on the best albums list. But I think it does show up on the best albums of the decade list. Yeah. All right. Okay. So now we understand. And this is one of the new singles that was added to this to make it more tantalizing, given that all of the music had leaked years ago. Sure. Hey, there it is. Sure, 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 sure. Fantastic. Sure, 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 sure. Drunk 2. What an amazing title. Right? Drunk 2? How can you not love that? Drunk 2. Ooh, banger. Definitely a big fan of this one. It's like each year they pick one little Uzi Vert song that they really like. Last year was New Patek. Free Uzi. This is probably my favorite one that came out this year. Sure, sure, sure. Megan Thee Stallion. Ooh, I know she had a song with the baby. Love the baby. Sure. This is another gigantic pop song. This is the one that ended up ending the run of Old Town Road, isn't it? This was the end of the Old Town Road. Ah, yeah. This was. I, I was talking to a friend of mine about Big Thief, and he was like, "Oh, the only song I've heard is Not," and I liked Not, but then I didn't listen to anything more. I should go out of my way to listen to this again, I guess. Because when I listened to Two Hands, I, it didn't stand out to me that much. But yeah, it's, it's probably good. Rosalia, I still gotta listen to you. I've heard so many good things. I have so many reasons to think that I'd like it, but I just have not. Ah, hey, that's cool. Nice, I love it. Sure, sure. Sure. I don't know what's left. I have no real predictions for this list. Maybe another Lana Del Rey song? I don't think that'll be number one, though. Must be something I'm missing. This is going to feel obvious, I bet. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that, but... Alright. Ah, really? Will they explain the Life on Mars line? I don't think this song is, like, that interesting compared to... I, I guess that's what it is. Oh, my God. Uh... Uh... I guess it's about, yeah, the fact that now people are talking about literally going to Mars. In which case, not only do I agree that that's actually a pretty nice lyric, I really agree with the sediment of it, too, that this is, like, a tragic thing. That when, when people are talking about going to Mars, I don't know. This is like a whole other thing. But to me, to me, it's like, you friggin' sociopaths, why do you want to go to Mars? Like, why? <laughs> Who gives a shit? Don't you think you should be working on things here? <laughs> like, <laughs> it's all the same money. It's all the same effort. It's all the same natural resources. Why don't we spend it on people that are here now instead of flinging a couple dozen people to Mars to have a miserable time and then die cold and alone? Why? Why go to Mars? I don't know. It's a, it's a big subject. It just really, it kind of pisses me off when I see someone like Elon Musk say, I'm going to die on Mars. Like, fuck you. That... Why? <laughs> All right, whatever. Let's move on. Uh, hey, nice. This is a good song. All right, so they gave Lana Del Rey album of the year, second place song of the year. FKA Twigs, second place album of the year, first place song of the year. So we call equity. All right, I have nothing more to say. Uh, look forward to my own 2019 list, which I'll put out before my 2010s list, because it's more exciting that way. Uh, I'll probably do that pretty soon. And then something will come out that'll make me wish I had included it, so. <sighs> Alright, that's all for now. Bye-bye.